What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to SOTG, student of the game. It's your boy, Sir Love, and I'm on here with my guy, Oz. One time for the one time. And listen, actually, wait, wait a second. It's your first time live in front of the camera. Yep. It's first time. First time. Yo, so check this out. You guys have been watching Phase 6 for quite some time. This is Oz, as in the Wizard of Oz, as in the person behind the city that makes the whole Emerald City work. Right. And so literally when you're on the website, you're having issues with anything on the site. This is the guy that is responding to you when the updates, a lot of the emails that go out. This is the guy behind that uh, integral part of the team. And I finally dragged him out and put him in front of the camera so we can do this show together, bro. How's it feel? I mean, you know, kicking and screaming, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome. Welcome. And for all you guys to watch the channel, you know, what I'm saying welcome, my guy. Make sure. Uh, you, you check him out on Instagram and, and, and like and follow and all that type of good stuff. So check this out. Student of the Game is all about giving you all a in-depth conversation uh, based off of clips that we're pulling, right? I want to give you an industry perspective. And so this particular clip right here is from T-Pain. And, um, you know, of course, I love anything Pain because I spent time working at Nappy Boy or working in collaboration with Nappy Boy, an artist that they had signed. Uh, and so uh, I, I always love pulling T-Pain clips. He's always been a, a super uh, funny, entertaining dude to, to watch. So I'm going to pull this clip. We're going to talk about record labels, record deals. Should you stay independent? And what does it really mean to be controlled by the label? What does it really mean to be stuck in a record deal? Let's talk about it. We're going to get T-Pain's perspective first. Here we go. Going independent is very much like um, Bill Gates skipping college and dropping out of college. Like, absolutely, it's a great idea if you have the resources to work outside of those means. If you don't have money and you don't have any backing, you don't have management or some shit like that, go to a label. They will give you all their money, but keep in mind... Here's what motherfuckers don't understand about labels. <laughs> You're taking their money. You have to pay that shit back. Got you it. have to pay that shit back, but that's not it. Like when they're like, oh, so-and-so got a $10 million, $10 million record deal. You have to give them back $10 million. You're not going to make a cent until everything you do pays them back that $10 million. Mm -hmm. You can yep. do whatever you want, and you're not going to make... Now, people know about that, but here's the thing. Bro, you know that person that you loaned $20 a month ago? And now, every time that person brings up anything about money, you're like, yeah, but you owe me $20, though. <laughs> That's how record labels work. <laughs> My nigga. When everybody said, oh, my record label's controlling me and I can't get out of this deal and y'all need to let me go, bro, the record label's sitting back like, we're controlling you because we gave you $10 million. And you think you're going, you, wait a minute. You think you're about to do whatever you want to do with our money? And then you think you're about to get out of your deal scot-free without paying us back our money? You didn't do anything. Your shit flopped. The $10 million we gave you was for you to make a dope project that wasn't going to flop. You already broke your fucking contract. So now you think we're going to let you go away and just get out of this deal while still owing us money? Get to him. No. First of all, so when people saying that record labels are controlling me and record labels are the devil and it's the Illuminati and boo ka doo ka doo ba doo we got to blame it on the devil because something must be wrong with God if these <laughs> people are controlling the world and shit. No, we made a bunch of money. We gave you some of it, but we gave you some of it because you said you was going to make it back tenfold. You didn't do that, and now you got to listen to us. Here's what we need you to do to make our money back. It's not about control. It's about making their fucking... They don't give a fuck if you make it or not. They don't give a fuck if you actually did... Well, they just want their money back. It's literally like that. And I can say that being the owner of a company. Ozzy. Mm. Boom. From the horse's mouth. Let's talk about it. There's a lot to unpack here. You know, um... From an independent perspective, I'm always hearing artists say, 
I want to be independent. I want to stay independent. F the label. This, that, and the third. I want to do my own thing. Right? It's a right. common theme. And on the other side of the coin, I hear artists bragging or, or, or talking about how much money you know they someone got in advance. Or, yo, they signed a deal for X amount of dollars. They signed a deal for... Like, I see both sides come through this channel and just, just come through the industry. And when I see these two things, what I really understand is that most artists don't understand either side very well. I don't think artists really understand the amount of work that it takes and the amount of money and investment. Let's start there first. So T-Pain says that going straight to get a record deal is like dropping out of college and trying it all on your own. If you have the resources, if you have momentum, if you have this going... Why not? Bill Gates did it. Bill Gates had licensing deals already in the tech space. He had already created softwares and programs that were elite at the time. He already had buyers. He was already making money. It makes no sense to sign. I can just scale up what I'm currently doing. That's the conversation you heard from Russ. That's the conversation you heard from Chance the Rapper. That's the type of conversation you hear from Young Dolph and, and Kevin Gates and people in this particular space. Like I've already built such an infrastructure. Why don't I just scale it? Right? But many independent artists don't know what it really takes to scale a company or to recognize that if you're not, and when I say scale it and I say business and money and company, if you're an independent artist and you're not currently generating tens of thousands of dollars, you know, at least a year, right? It could be tens of thousands of dollars a month, then you're not really in business. No. You're not really there yet. You're trying to make it. You like independent is. We make two hundred thousand dollars a month. We make ten thousand dollars a month. We make five thousand dollars a month. Like we you know, we make a couple million dollars a month, right? But you're making money every month as an independent. You have a business where you sell a product, you sell a series of products and services, and you're generating revenue, right? right. Those people typically have a better chance of staying independent or doing pub deals to get additional publishing or doing distribution deals to expand the distribution. Maybe get a loan through distribution, which puts you in the same situation T Pain is talking about, or um, they'll do a, a slew of other different type of deals with companies like String Cuts and all these people that are out there. So, if you go with the label, as Payne was saying, they're giving you a loan. Oh, yeah. In advance. And so many people in the game right now, like, if you just think like, how people are hustling this, uh, the SBA, the SBA stuff. Oh, yeah, the SBA loans. I was just talking to a, a friend of mine, um, who's a trucker yeah. and just got a loan with them. And he's like, he, the SBA loan is great if you know what you if you know what to do, right? But it's still a loan. It's still a loan. And the thing is, you only can make money with that loan by using it for things for that business. So right. therefore, again, you get this ten million dollar advance, you go out there, you go spend this money on your house, your car, your mama, your girl, your guy, whoever. Mm-hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with your records. Nothing to do with your records. Nothing to do with your records. I gave you ten million, or the record label gave you ten million, so that you can go out there and do what? Make hits. I want my money back. So if you decide not to do so, guess what happened? Oh, you thought you was gonna get out this this deal? Like like T Pain said, scot free? Oh no. You about to work for this. Cause hey. I need I need my money back today. And the thing about it is so record labels take more risk than anybody else because there is no FDIC that's going to recoup them if they take a loss. They're pretty much angel investors, like VC funders, right? Yeah. So if you were to fail, if they gave you $10 million and you failed and it didn't work out, you can just walk away and go get a regular job, work at a, at a call center or something like that, and the record label wouldn't be able to do anything to get their money back. They nope. just took a loss, right? It's no way for them to recoup. Um, and... What they then do is say, all the labels have gotten together and said, if you fail, we're going to hold your, we're going to, you're going to have to pay your debt from label to label. So if you go, if you, example, if you sign a $10 million deal, because that's the example you use. If you sign a $10 million yeah. deal yeah. and you only pay back $4 million in that process, you're still in debt $6 million, you want to label on bad terms, you want to leave. When you leave to go to the next label, the next label is going to have to pick up your $6 million to sign you and keep working with you. Yep. Right? And that's, you know, it's like this honor code they have in a sense, right? And then sometimes it's, it's contractual. So in that, if the next label wants to pick you up, right, first la- label A is like, look, shit, if you want them, have them, but pay us our <laughs> pay money us back. Our money. It's, just like, it's just like any other sport, right? Right. Uh, I was having a conversation. Basketball, yeah. Basketball or football. I want to talk about football because got to talk about, I mean... 
Shout out to Tom Brady. You are the GOAT. I'm mad about it, but it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But we in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Matt Ryan, same way, right? right? We paid all this money to him. Mm-hmm. We can't get rid of Matt Ryan if we wanted to. No. We're stuck with him because no, uh, no other team is going to pick him gonna up. Pick up that debt. And pick up that They're debt. They're not going to pay we, the amount of money for the quality of what for he, the quality he was releasing. For what he was supposed to release. Right. Right? Same thing with an artist. You were supposed to do what? Make a platinum selling album or you were supposed to bring in X amount of money coming back because they gave you this, right? And, and like you said, sometimes it's contractual. Sometimes they're expecting more than what I gave you, mm-hmm. right? That's why, that's why they do what they do. But if you decide that you didn't, well, you go in, you do your work, you don't do the work that you're supposed to do, or the, the market doesn't respond to it, or you know you get hit with a pandemic, right? And you and your and your shit flops. I don't care. I still want my money. I still want my money. I, that's why. That, I mean, you remember the album deals that you people used to get? Multi albums, three Multi-albums, albums, six albums. Yeah, yep. we don't do that no more. No, 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 no. No, they still doing those. No, no, no. But, but, but it's but, not the same focus. I see what you're saying. All right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's not the same focus. It's not about the albums. The albums was just to say this is how much you need to fulfill so that we can recoup. But if you don't fulfill these albums, or you do fulfill these albums, but you don't recoup this money also, oh, we gonna hang you on the on the hook for a little bit more because. You did not. You make us our money back. Make but our money back. <clears throat> here's the here's the flip though. Remember back in the day, artists used to be complaining because labels wouldn't release their album. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. It'd be for a multitude of reasons, but some of those reasons could were, were. All right, you have I have you for five albums. If I your first album didn't do too well, your second album did okay, but like the amount of money that I've advanced you over the course of time. I need to hold your album because I need more time for sales to come in. Come you in, sell yeah. X amount of albums per month, and according to our payback schedule, I can't drop another album with you until this time until period because I need period. to collect all this money first because yep. you're not selling like you thought you'd be selling. No, you're not. Meanwhile, the artist is like, well, let me drop another one. And the label's thinking, well, if I let you get all the way to album five, then you're out, and when do I recoup my money? Similar, was that like similar to a Tupac deal? Like, he had to get... What? He had to do, I think, well, a total of like seven albums, I Yeah, think? but Tupac's wasn't because he was underperforming. That's right. His That's wasn't right. It wasn't because he was underperforming. He, but, he was, wanted, but he did do enough. To, yeah, he so wanted... He could have got out the yeah, deal. Yeah, that's, that's why he did the two-track album. Exactly. Right? So he can, he can put get two albums out of that one album. And, and that's the only part that I'm really talking about, right? Because right? he was an example of somebody who overperformed. Overperformed, yep. Not only made them millions, but was like, all right, I'm done. I'm gonna go and try to go do my own thing. You know, Suge Knight. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently they were gonna. That's a whole other conversation. We have the well, we, yeah. we have a video about that because he was supposed to do the the West Side. He was supposed you know, to do not all make, of that. East Side, um, Defro East and Defro West and all that stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, I, I think that the, the the key thing that artists don't really get when we're looking at signing deals, mm-hmm. right, is that we don't understand debt. And I think mm. the I think mm. the education system has failed us as a country when it comes to understanding debt. Like debt, so many of us are willing to take debt because we regularly live with debt. Oh, debt. Right? Yeah. Everyone's walking around with a cell phone that they don't own. They're still paying the bill on. Right? People mm. are living houses they don't own. They're still paying the bill on. People are driving cars they don't own. If you looked at America and you took away every item that a person has that they don't own, most people wouldn't own nothing but the clothes oh, on their man. back and the food in their refrigerator. If that. If right. Yes, yeah, do people laying away clothes? Some too. people laying away clothes. Right. Too. So and maybe their furniture and a couple different things. Like, right. You know, so it's like we are so accustomed to debt that we don't recognize the penalties associated with debt. We don't understand even the the turbulent nature of our country as a whole and how quickly all this can disappear because we don't really own nothing. True. Right? So when artists are going into getting a, a deal and they're going, oh man, I'm about to come up, I'm about to get a bag, they don't look at it as I have to pay this back. They look at it as I'm about to get a bag. Yeah. I'm about to put my mom in my house. I put all this work in. It's time I made it. And that's one of the reasons why the labels went, they made a couple different changes. So number one, a lot of times they're not they're not giving you funds up front. You're not getting if you sign a X amount of million dollar deal. Let's say which we keep using a ten million dollar deal because T Pain use that number. But right. you get a ten million dollar deal, which you must be fucking amazing in today's Gotta market. Be. You get a ten Gotta million dollar deal. You get a ten million dollar <laughs> deal, and um, the label's gonna break that up into different pieces. You're gonna have a production budget that's gonna be just for doing beats and shit like that and making music and this and a third. 
Uh, you may have a you're gonna have a tour support budget that's just for the road and tour and this that and the third. You're gonna have a marketing budget that's just for marketing. So that ten million dollars is broken up in different pieces, right? Mm-hmm. Then there will be an allocation for for you, right? Because your, your per diem and all that shit comes out of the ten million. It's not you get ten million plus a per diem. So you may get the ten million, but in addition to that ten million, it may cover your house, it may cover your car, it may cover you getting twenty thousand dollars a month or ten thousand dollars a month, True. just you know just per diem money to move around with, right? All of that is in the 10 million. So it's all broken up and dispersed in, in different ways, right? And that's not including the fact that everyone gets paid off the top, right? Everyone else gets their money off. You don't. No, no. No, no. Lawyer going to get their percentage. Oh, yeah. Someone's going to get their percentage. They're going to get their Cause cut. Because you, you hired them. Because you hired them, yeah. right? They're going to get their clear cut. But your your shit's going to be departmentalized when you when you sign the legal, right? Um, and then afterward, another thing to recognize is that, and I said this in another video, you don't control all of those budgets. So, and all of this was done to combat the fact that, you know, people were, like you said, were buying houses and cars and all that stuff. So, like, you sign to, um, you, you go, you look at your production budget and the label will say, hey, you have $300,000, what if it's a $10 million deal? Maybe you have $3 million to make your album, right? right. Which means you can pay Pharrell, you can pay, you know, Diplo, you can pay, like, these real high-end producers that cost mad money to work on your project because you have the budget allocation to do so. Um... Then you look at your marketing budget. You don't control your marketing budget, mm. right? Yep. And also, your recording budget you can pay for different studios. You can pay for like everything that comes with the studio experience. If you're at the studio, and before I move to the marketing, if you're at the studio, you're recording. You ain't never Pharrell. Y'all making some dope shit. You're like, yo, I, I want to, you know, saying do lines and shit like that. The fucking lines is coming out your budget. You leave like, yo, I want some strippers in here to give me inspiration. They coming out your budget. Yep. That's your recording budget. You leave. You're the, the strippers, you know, leave. You're like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go. Uh, to the club, drop some, you know, this and the third. Like I'll, so, some of that can come out of your recording. Some of it, not all of that, but yeah. some of that can start coming out of your recording budget because you're in that energy. Like anything you're doing in the studio, some of the, sometimes it's more rigid. It's like, yo, this is only going to these specific tasks. And sometimes when you're a new artist, oftentimes the label will control where you can go and who you can work with. Yeah. Right. And so you don't even get free range options on who you can work with. They're like, you can work with these producers. You can work with anyone else that you came up with and anyone else you, but these are the industry people who want you to work with this person. We already guaranteed them 50% of your album on a song deal, this person. So you might walk into the situation, not even in fucking control. Cause it saves them money. They right. have to do that. I mean, yeah. it's protecting yeah. their own assets. And they yeah. also, and they also want to increase the likelihood that you're going to get a hit. I gave you $10 million. I don't want to take no chances. Now, I, you, you was doing great, but shit, you know, like $10 million is really not a realistic example because if they're giving you $10 million, you have a track history of success and they're probably not doing all this fuck shit to you. True. But if you're a person getting like a $500,000, $300,000, $80,000 advance, you know what I'm saying? If you're getting those types of numbers, then, you know, they're, they're, there's going to be way more control over what you can do and who you can work with and, and all this type of shit, unless it was just like, Unless it was one of those deals where they shot you some cash and it was not a, a large amount, True. they're giving you free range. They're not taking a big risk on you. They're not heavily involved. They're just really capping on your success and doing light service work, light mm-hmm. servicing of your of your project. But if they're all invested, they're controlling all sorts of shit, right? And then on the marketing side, they control where your marketing resources are spent. Yep. They're saying this is my money. Yep. So you're basically taking a loan for three hundred thousand dollars to say that's the portion of your budget. Yep. And then you're giving them your credit card and saying, okay, now go, now go, now go spend my, spend my money, go spend my debt, right? You know, for me, for yeah, me, yeah. yeah, so that I can pay you back, so that I can pay you back, right? And even if you once your product is already successful, they they still have your card, but and, and, so they could keep sliding shit, and they're like, we wanted to keep it scaling. You're like, wait, wait, I'm trying to pay you back. Stop running it up. And they're like, nah, we gotta run it up. But it's just like, I mean, it's just like any other bank. You know what I mean? They do the exact same things. You get a credit card. They see that you're doing really well with that credit they card. Increase your limit. They increase your limit. They don't even tell you that they increase your limit. Yep. You know what I mean? You go in there sweating, trying to make a big purchase. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this. And whoop, green. Cha-ching. I just walked away with, you know, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. But that, but that's. But the, you may not have a system in place to pay it back to yet. To pay it back yet. And, you, and, and that's the one thing that I will tell, you know, all artists that when they're going into one of these deals, have a plan, right? If the contract is good and you're okay with it, Write down a plan before you sign it so that you know what you need to do going into the next round. Because you, like like he said at the beginning, Bill Gates dropped out of college because he already had these, system. these systems already ready to go. Yeah. He was like, I don't need college. It's more of a waste of my time if I continue to stay here. 
if I continue to keep doing these things and playing these games, I could be working. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can be independent from everything and everyone, and that's what he did. As an artist, even as a producer or an engineer who's going into these contracts and getting these deals, please, please have a plan going forward because if you don't, I promise you, yeah. it's going to get bad. It gets bad. It's going to get bad. Well, some people get lucky. Luck. luck. How people many get people get lucky? It's like saying, you know, some people win the lottery. How many people play the lottery? Yeah, but that's a, that's another piece of it because when I look at um, rest in peace, Pop Smoke. When you know he had a two year trajectory of success. Oh man! It's like he said he started rapping right after like eighteen, something like that. He was like nineteen or something like that. Right. Eighteen or nineteen started rapping. And he was on by twenty twenty one. On. Right. Um, and we see these scenarios and circumstances, and it inspires people. It makes a, a large group of people say, "I can do it too." But you're right; it's like hitting the lottery, mm-hmm. right? Um, where the average, the the not even the average, the the masses, the the, the mass, mass populace of right. you guys will not fall in that category. Instead, you're going to fall in the category of a person that busts their ass and works for success, right? Jay Z falls in that category. Chance the Rapper falls in that category. Russ falls in that category. Beyonce falls in that category. Like, there's a lot of people that fall in the category of, yo, I got to bust my ass to get here. And, and yeah. the large majority of, of greats bust Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, yep. right? Even though she was mad young when she got in. She was, they had her out there busting ass as a kid. Maybe not as much as Katy Perry. But anyway, um, when you look at these situations and, and, you, and you, you see success happen real quickly, I think that it makes us believe that it was easy or that it's sweet and that people are just going to think I'm dope. But what I've learned watching it is that you don't know your true value until you've tested it in the marketplace. Definitely. Right? Even when you look at someone like Pop, his shit was on fire. And everyone was just trying to scale it because it was already on fucking oh, fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Most of you guys that are watching this platform are working your record. You're dropping your shit on, on, on YouTube and getting a thousand views, a couple hundred views, a couple thousand views, tens of thousands of views, whatever. You're not dropping it on YouTube and getting 10 million views overnight. And that's not what's happening. You are working your record. You're working your career. So what does that mean? You have to figure out how to monetize your music releases, how to monetize your videos, how to monetize your assets, your merchandising. You have to figure out that whole right. system. And by figuring out that whole system, it puts you in a better position to have a real conversation with the label to say, hey, this is how much money I'm willing to take because I know from a business perspective, when I spend $10,000 on marketing, my results are typically between twenty to 30000 mm. I net ten to 20000 right. per $10,000 I spend, mm. and I net that across these areas. Merchandise, this, you know, merchandise, um, you know, streams, whatever those things are. You understand how much return you get on investment. You understand that some of your returns are, are fixed to the amount that you spend because they scale evenly with your spin. So your, your merchandise sales, for example, if you're running ads or something like that against your merchandise, you may see that scales in a, it's variable, but it's kind of fixed to your spin. Mm-hmm. But then you may have fixed uh, income that's also variable, but it's, 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 it's not reliant upon ads where like shows. And you know, every X amount of time I get, or I get about this amount of money in shows. So for every quarter, I do $80,000 in show money, right? If I had extra money to promote my shows, would I make more than $80,000, right? right? Am I in control of show promotion in the first place? That's Is that true. even a place that, that I want to invest? Yep. Do I have an infrastructure for <laughs> that, yep. right? You know, James Brown in his video, he, in his movie, in, not his movie, in his life, but they talked about his movie. They talked about how he controlled everything from the promotion to the book and other things. That he controlled every. That's the reason why this motherfucker was riding around in private jets. Mm-hmm. It's a black man in the 60s. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a true business. You have to figure out. If you can't answer the question right now, if I gave you $10,000 right now, where would you spend it and what would be the return? And if you don't know those numbers, then you're not in business yet. You're not in business. You're playing. You're, you're trying to get there. Yeah. You don't have any methodology. You have no estimates, no guesstimates. Mm-hmm. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what the return is going to be. You don't know why. It's a guessing game. For and, you. and if that's the scenario and you're taking big deals, you're the type of person who's going to put yourself in a fucked up situation. Oh, man. And it's, 
Business. You got to learn business. I can't get around it. No, you can't. Business is, is the number one key. I mean, if you if you don't know, you need to go find out. That's the knowledge, right? Right. You, you, you talked about it. It's, it's knowledge, it's networking, it's money, right? If you don't have... I believe if you don't have two out of the three, you don't need to kind of move into those other spaces without those because you're going to need that part first before you can really get to where you got to go right. in these areas. I, I hope that, that people who are getting into uh, the music industry, who are trying to be an artist, pay attention to that part. Because knowledge is free. You just got to go look for it, right? Right. Knowledge is free. And, and you, of course, you'll get it here. You'll get it anywhere else. You can go online. You have the, the world in the palm of your hand, right? right? Money could be kind of hard to get, but if you understand business, you can understand how to make money. How to make money, right? right. And, and then the network is just all about who you are as a person. Are you, are you willing to talk? Right? Are you willing to go out there and, and be sociable? Not just even as a manager or or as a producer, engineer, but definitely as an artist because you've got to be that. Listen, like people me, want to have that conversation. I gotta, I gotta hit you with this. So I was at the studio last night. I was at uh, Doppler yesterday. Okay. Um, and I, from a networking perspective, just I was at Doppler, and I walk in the door, and um, so, you know, brother, you know, I, I walk in, you know, the buzz in, what room we got, whatever. <clears throat> so we ran out the A room at Doppler. And I come in, and I have to sign in, all this other type of stuff. And two guys were at the front. And, you know, one dude is, like, pressing me. So who are you? What are you doing? Who are you here for? It's down a third. I'm just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you giving me this type of energy, right? And then, you know, I'm answering his questions. And afterward, he does, like, a whole energy shift mm. where he just kind of, he made everything comfortable. Like, I can't explain it because it's like, I talk about it in the management book about energy and controlling energy and like yeah. people that know how to do it at a certain at a certain level because uh, I I learned how to do it at a certain level you un, you see when other people have that skill mm-hmm. and he felt me feeling uncomfortable like bro what you know what's up and he shifted the energy with his language and his body language and everything and the whole vibe by the time we walked from the front back to the A room I was like yo whoever this dude is I like this dude after he was just kind of grilling me at the door right right I was like I like this dude fast forward. I find out that this dude and, and my client are like, they cool. They both used to teach at the, at the university together. Oh. So I'm like, oh, bet. So they know each other. And so I had just told her, like, yo, the dude at the front door, he got the energy. He got that shit. Right? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I said, he's played this game at a high level because he, he got the shit. Only certain people had that shit. Right. I told her that. He comes in. He's telling me. Come to find out, dude, dude used to engineer for Diddy. He mixed, he mixed Last Train to Paris. He mixed, uh, he mixed like all these classic fucking albums. He was the engineer to mix all that wow. shit, right? He's been on the, around the world on tour with all these, all these different cats. Used to engineer out of New York. Dude's by the name of Kevo. They call him Kevo, right? Me and him are talking. We we chat up. He comes back in. We go to the studio and we connect. And I say all that. I gave you context. Like this, this motherfucker done accomplished a lot of shit. We connect. Over not music industry. Oh, I've done this or you've done that. You can you help me? And I can't. No, no, no. Networking was us connecting on talking about our kids. Mm-hmm. Connect in our our conversation. Of networking was connecting on lifeguarding, knowing mm-hmm. CPR. Um, we talked about books we've read, comparing different notes from different books. Mm-hmm. We had read the same books and mm-hmm. shit. And I was like, oh, and, and then remember that chapter when dude was talking? He was like, yo. Uh, like we was read, we talked about the To Be Loved by uh, Barry Gordy, fucking amazing classic. You got to get that book. Read that, yo. If you're in the music industry, read the shit. You should read that shit like every two years because there's so many nuggets in it that if you don't know the game, you're gonna read it and, and just find it entertaining. It's a great book. But if you know the game, there's gonna be so many fucking nuggets. And if you don't know it, and then later, two years later, you'll read it again and realize that you've, you've learned more, and there'll be a whole bunch of nuggets you've missed because he's giving you the shit anyway. Mm. Anyway, so we're talking, about, <laughs> we're talking about this shit. We just in that motherfucker vibing. Right. And I'm just like, and I, it brought me to this thought of like networking is is about having a life outside of music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what you bond on. And when people talk about networking, I want to network with you. Like, don't network with me, bro. Don't. You know what I'm saying? Don't. Just hi. Just, yeah, talk. Let's have a regular conversation. Like, because that's, that's, the, that's the main point of, like you said, when it comes down to energy, it's like, he gave you the aggressive energy in the beginning because he was like, I don't know you, right? I got to protect my business, right? Mm-hmm. I know I need to make sure that my space that I'm creating right here is not going to get popped by anybody else, right? If if anybody's going to pop the bubble, it's going to be me, mm-hmm. right? 
Then once I understand what you're here for, oh, okay, cool. Now we can try to have a conversation. Now I can shift it up. Right, because now I know that you don't have no Ill, Ill, Ill intent against anything that I'm creating. You were able to come in there and like and, and really you, you did a shift on it as well because you went from being on a defensive, right? Because you were about to be like, Whoa, I know why I'm here, I know what I'm doing. And then you were able to look at it and like, you know what? Like after we get through that part, you know why I'm here. I understand why you're here. All right, what else do we need to talk about? Because y'all could have ended your conversation right then and there. It could have, but you, let me tell you something that's crazy though, because I asked him, I told him we was talking about it's like yo. I was like, yo, dude was pressing me at the door. And he was like, he started laughing. He was like, yo, he was like, man, I saw you walk in. And he said, by the way you walked in the door, I knew you did some shit. <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, fuck. How I walk? Can you show me? <laughs> like, right, you know what I'm right, right, I, I right, thought right. that was some cool shit. It was like, it was some ego stroking shit for me. But at the same time, it was kind of like, Damn, I thought because I had been, you know, we've been, I've been fucking around the tech so much. Right. I thought I lost a lot of my my music swag. I thought I had to get it back. Right, 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 you know, right. You know, right. I, I told Pro when we got in the studio, I was like, yo, I felt like I just jumped right back on the goddamn bike. That's how it is. We walked in there and I was just like, yo, let's work. Artists is fucking in there. Anyway, that's the name. You no, 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 that's no, but that's, 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 that's what they bro. need to hear. The because... artist was in there working. Which we had, so we're in there working on the on the Viacom right. deal, right? We're gonna work on a Viacom deal, which we'll talk to you guys about. If you stay and watch this, if you don't, you're gonna miss out. You're gonna miss shit. out. You're gonna definitely anyway, miss out. So we're working on a Viacom deal, and uh, we got like four artists in there writing. We got, you know, it's the A room, so there's people all over, you know, writing in different areas, and and producers that came in, the producers and writers are coming in and out, dropping their beats mm. off, it's down the third, and we in there just fucking making, yeah. making records, you know, drinks pouring and shit. That's just a fucking vibe. And, and I'm in there, and I and chill. Pro goes, Pro's like, hey, hey, sir. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. Yo, hop on these boards. <laughs> and I was like, hop on the boards. Like, motherfucker ain't hopped on the boards since two thousand eight, nine you know, type I feel shit, you. I right? Feel you. I feel you. Yo, I hopped on them boards. It was like punching, clicking in. Like, yo, yo, run it back. Yeah, you know, that shit just clicked right. right back in. And I remember I was sitting in the chair, bro. I was sitting in the chair. It's the A room, so the A room's all elaborate and shit. So they got the like lights all on you, like they really highlight the engineer, make the engineer feel good and shit. So I'm in, I'm in that spot, the lights are on me, and I had a moment where I was like, I remember being a little kid, like 12, 13 years old, dreaming to be in this studio, in this room, because the A room ain't no cheap room. Sorry, you know, and then all the greats have put hit records in this room, right? And I'm sitting at the boards, running some shit, and then I go. And I went through my whole career, and then I went, but I don't like being in behind the boards because the person behind the boards ain't got no goddamn power. Got no <laughs> goddamn power. I don't know that. And then my brain just started. And I went from, I went from, I went from. All right, that's cool. All right, give someone get on this shit. <laughs> you realize what your plan no. <laughs> in life was, and it was like this ain't. This. But but it was dope to be there, and it's, it also speaks testament to people that want to get in the game. Like you got to yeah. learn everything. Yes. You gotta learn everything because I can hop on the on the fucking boards and mix and compress and this and that. And I, I'm not I'm I'm not the, the, the guy. I'm not Kevo. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't ask me to mix your shit. It's gonna sound okay. <laughs> <laughs> your car gonna say it's okay, but then they gonna play something else. Gonna be like, eh. But see, that's your knowledge. Like that's yeah. the, that's the blanket of your knowledge. Like you threw it out there and you was like, I'm gonna learn all of this. I'm gonna concentrate on this. Right. But I'm gonna get all of this little on the edge, and and that's what you were able to to bring in. That's why. You know, if you're gonna go independent, if you're gonna go into that space, you gotta know everything. You gotta know everything because because if you don't, like, you're gonna miss out. Like, yep. you could have looked like you were incompetent if she'd have told you know, it's like, hey, hop on the boards. You're like, uh, she know I know the boards, but though. she know that, but she they don't know that. that. No, but they don't know that. No, you see what I'm saying? Me. But th- but that's the thing though. I like, used to, bro. I used to sit in studio sessions and see the engineer. Fucking up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I couldn't say shit because I wasn't. I didn't have the authority in the room back right. when I was working under other people, yeah. and I didn't want to embarrass bro, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's engineering, but we all in here kicking it. You smoking, you high as fuck, you drinking and shit, and you fucking up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And and I used to just sit in those rooms and be like, man, I just need to touch it. I need to like, and then I had to learn to to fall back. But yeah. one thing I did when I started getting my own authority. I would be in the sessions and I learned to, and this is just for everyone who wants to be a boss type shit. I learned to check the engineers without having to fucking embarrass them. Oh yeah. I would just be in the, I, I just be in there like, yo, turn the ratio up on the compressor. 
And the dude be like, oh, fuck, he knows what a ratio and a compressor is shit. I need to goddamn pay attention. I need to, fuck I need to pay attention. I yo. can't just be in here just smoking and drinking all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yo, you're fucking you, off on money right yo, now. Yo, yo, the, the seventh band, I need, can we can we turn it up a little bit? I want to, yeah, I want a little more clarity on the record. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah, that sound a little, like, and then when you're talking about it, like, oh, that shit fire. Nah, hey, man, that's a little, it's dope, but that's a little muddy. Can we make that punchier? Like, knowing right. the, the, the engineering terms, it'll, it, it, it helps because it'll make people take your shit. <laughs> more serious. seriously yeah yeah it's like every piece like i i was talking to a graphic designer the other day and i was like listen this is the vision i sent you over the things for the graphics what i want to do and i said i'm not sure what dimensions we're running i'm not sure what the pixel the, the pixel clarity needs to be but um I, I know we're printing at the regular 300 dspi and i know that we need that, that, that. And i'm just saying regular shit right this is nothing complicated if you do graphics you're like you ain't say shit but right. if you don't do graphics you don't know the fuck i'm talking about nothing. right and so the whole time we were talking i was giving him instructions in graphics language yeah right yeah, yeah. and at the end of the conversation and i was telling him i was telling him like i need to when you finish it make sure you highlight the color codes because i need to lock in the color codes for marking brand and consistency doc when we finished the conversation he was like hey man i just want to tell you you know your shit normally i talk to clients and they don't know what the fuck i'm talking about oh man and he was like you know your shit and when i tell you from from the music to the marketing to the video to the to the whole shit right you got if you want to run a company and be effective you want to be a great manager and be effective you have got to know the whole shit yeah man i know adobe premiere i know the, and it's not that you, i need to do the shit i just need to know it you need to know it cuz you got to have you got to be able to have the language of that world right. like in the alchemist it speaks about like world languages because we all uh, uh, speak differently. Yep. We, we operate differently, right? You're you're a manager, right? Like you're the person that understands business in a way that says, "I need to learn this. I need to learn how to manage this person, this thing, whatever it is, and I need to make it expand and then scale." Right? right. Me, I'm a creative person. I love to be in the area of, of, of designing and 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 putting my 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 mental into something and creating something brand new from nothing. So when me and you have to have a conversation, right? I gotta know a little bit about what you know, and you gotta a little bit know about what I uh, know a little bit about what I know, so that therefore when we come together, we can have that conversation. Right. When you get two people who are in, in in the same room speaking different languages, it's hell. It's yeah, trying it's, to understand. And you know, you, you end up losing time. Oh yeah, and spending extra money. Yes, there's a bunch of iterations to whatever the fuck you're trying to do. Yes, because you you can't sync. And I mean, I see it at every level. This is not just independent. This is like corporate entertainment shit. Yeah. Where uh, I've seen, you know, executives, major executives and major companies have communication issues. And what they do, what they do is they teach their assistants their style. Yeah. So their assistant knows how they like stuff delivered, what stuff means. Yeah. And so they can be completely all over the place, but their assistant can catch it. That's one of the reasons why if you any assistants watching this, you know some of this assistants, let them know this. It's one of the reasons why assistants, it's very hard for an assistant to get promoted and move up because the person that made you an assistant knows I can't function without you, mm. right? Mm. Um, no, number number two, assistants don't always have uh, the gall to transition because when you transition out of the assistant role, there's like, you've been working here. He, yes. <laughs> right, you've been working at the top. So like, like... <laughs> When you come, you're not getting ready to do this. No, nah, you're nah. not doing this. No. When you step out of the assistant, you're doing something like this. Yeah. Now you might make more money, but your power is going to change. Everything. And a lot of times, assistants can get caught up in that. That power. That struggle. that that place of being yeah. in that space. Yeah. It, I, it's, 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 you get drunk off that power. You get, or or the position, the the authority. Yes. Yeah. It's all power. Yeah. It's all power. It's, all power. it's yeah. nuanced power. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah because yeah. assistants control who comes in the door, who gets the deal, who does. Like assistants control so much shit. And for anyone that's working projects or doing anything, talking to the assistant is the best way to the get some shit in the door. The best way to get anything done. That's you where want, you want to go. That's what. That's the person. That's if don't. As a manager, if you're, any managers out there looking at this, you want to understand the power struggle of trying to get your artists in the space. You don't always need to go to the executive, right? You don't always need to have that, oh, I need to have this big shot. No, 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 no. Take your time. Learn the people who are around the, ex- the executive because, one, they're a little more, more closer to the earth, Yep. right? They're a little bit more attainable. You can yep. reach out to them. It won't sound so weird to yep. have that conversation with them. I mean, it, even if you're comfortable having that conversation with them, the executive's not going to be comfortable having that conversation with you. Right. So that's why you go talk to the assistant so you can have that 
you can have that earth to earth conversation, right? right? You can have that language conversation where y'all understand each other, even if y'all, even if they are, they, they understand what they they understand where you're coming from because they're at a higher level, mm -hmm. right? And you may have to navigate a little bit of that, but you know something, and knowing something is better than knowing nothing at all. It changes everything. It changes everything because they can if they if they see the passion, they see the drive, the determination. They're like, you know what? Let me give you a chance. Right, then, yeah. then, being you consistent, work being persistent, and yeah. all that type you of stuff. You gotta be, you gotta be. But all of these are skills. Cause I think we 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 drifted from pain. Oh yeah. And the reason yeah, is yeah, because yeah. We're, we're these are the skills required and knowledge and things that you gotta have to run as an independent. And I think that's a big portion of this video and why we're doing this video is because so many people want to be independent. They do. And don't understand all the pieces that are there. And no. then there are people that say, I don't want to be independent. Right, because I don't want to do all that work. Yes, and they say yes. I want to go to the label, yes. and they hope that the label will do the work, and then discover that the label will not do the work. Do none of the the work. label is there to <laughs> scale the work that you have done, and by scale, multiply your efforts. Yeah. So if you have no effort, they have nothing to multiply. They got nothing to do. They can't. They can't expedite. Ex they can't expedite your uh your your work and make it run faster if you don't have work to expedite. We can't grow exponentially if you don't have any work to grow. Right. Or if your work is ineffective. Because to scale something is to scale. You, you, you expand things that are effective. Mm. When you can trace your dollar to a result, you can scale it. Yes. So for every $10 I spend, I sell two hats. Each hat costs $40. It costs to, to produce the hat. My, let's say my profit off each hat is $20. Mm -hmm. So for every $10 I spend, I make $40 in profit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So now I know that my net is I've been, I've, I've, it's 30 on this right. total with after the expenses. And I say profit, I meant the profit for the manufacturing of the hat itself. The hat itself right? yeah. So now I know if I spend $10, I'll make $30. Well, I can do that all day. So if I'm going to make, if I spend $100, I'll make $3,000. Yeah. If I spend $1,000, I make thirty thousand dollars, right? Right, and when you understand your numbers like that, you go, "I can scale." Now that is what labels are here to do. They're here to scale because then you re you hit what's called the law of diminishing returns. Oh yeah, in which you can no longer scale any further because you have captured your whole audience. Mm -hmm. Everyone in your audience has purchased, or everyone that was a willing buyer has it's bought. bought yeah. So now you have to expand into another market of buyers that are willing to buy the same product that may not have been aware of your product and that's when labels start doing scaling. Because scaling isn't just going straight up. Mm -hmm. It's like this. It's a, it's a yeah. up or upside down funnel. Mm -hmm. all right? Or it's a up down funnel you're trying to pull people in. But on the top side, it's an upside down funnel of you mm -hmm. grabbing more and more audiences. And sometimes you have to tweak your messaging. You have to tweak your product. You have to tweak all these things. But that's what the labels are there for. They're, they're like, we get this shit. But we need you to have something that sells already. And we can expand it. Oh, you're making $20,000 a month? Okay, give us this. We're, we're going to make sure you're making $200,000 a month mm. by the time we're done. And when we do it, we want half. Mm. And then you're going to look at it and go, well, I was making $20,000 a month, but now I'm making $100,000 a month. And y'all are making $100,000 a month. This is a pretty good deal. It's a win-win. And, and, and you say something like that, and it made me think about... Uh... The, the double disc album, uh, The Love Below and the Speaker Box, right? Right. Like, Speaker Box, Love Below. Uh, Love Below. Outcast. Yeah, Outcast. Double Diamond, right? Two different sounds that yeah. they created. Dre went with the whole, like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to pull, like, anybody who is who feels like, you know, they want to be a rock star. They want to be that, that, that. I don't even know how to explain Pariah, it. That, outlet, yeah, that open, outlet is, free. Yeah, that person that yeah. just, I'll do whatever. And then Big Boy went the route of, let's stick with the players, the gangsters. Like, they're, 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 their old mantra of what they used to be. Right. They never, he never really changed so, so much. Yeah. But they, you, you, they, they did exactly what you just said. It's like a fluctuating market that they went. They, Dre went and got the everyone on the outside and... and and um and Big Boy worked on everyone on and the they, inside of their market, and they met in the middle. And the label did alternating campaigns for yes, the project. For both it was projects. different marketing for roses really smell like boo boo. Mm -hmm. Then you know I like the way you move, move. exactly. Right? You saw you saw them do that with Kanye West when they had na 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 wait till I get my money yep. Yep. right. Yep. And then at the same time they had the, what was it the power record? It was power not power. It was um. The fucking record where he spent all that money and he was in the in the oh can't tell me nothing no that was that's the same record no, no you're no, talking no. about um um, um 
Just, work it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. And, uh, uh, the one with uh, Daft Punk. Yeah. It's, it's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me stronger. But all night long. Bigger, uh, uh, longer, stronger, faster. Yeah, 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 that record. That one, yeah. Stronger, that record. Yeah. So if you look at the quality of the video, who it was targeted to, mm-hmm. who, what but platforms it played on, right. what radio stations they were, yes. what environments. Now, here's the thing. Who sat down and decided, we're going to release two singles. We're going to scale this single this way. We're going to scale that single this way. We're going to distribute it. Like, this is what the label is getting their percentage for. yeah. Right? Yeah. But they got Kanye West, who gave two hit songs at the same time. They knew they could win on both. Because they already, he already had a fan base. They already had a system for making money. They Mm -hmm. already had merchandising. They already had all. So, for independence, you're trying to create those structures. You're in a business to create structure that you yourself can scale and stay independent, right? Because what did Chance do? Chance said, I'm going to go partner with Apple and scale. Definitely. Right? You can partner with whoever you want. You can go partner with Red Bull. You can go partner with Chevy. You can go partner with whoever you want and fucking scale your product, right? Yeah. Or scale your brand. Travis uh, Travis Scott said, I'm going to go at McDonald's and scale my brand. Everyone's like, man, you should have got a cut. He's selling all the McDonald's burgers. McDonald's burgers been selling. But guess what? <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people that ate McDonald's that didn't know who he was. And now they know. And now they know. And then there's a whole lot of other brands that saw what he could do, and now they want to buy in. Right? So you can scale so many different ways, right? And yeah, he could have got a, a cut off the burger, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of opportunities to win, but the question is, can you make one thing make profit? Can you scale that one thing enough to see residual returns month mm. after month off of said thing? And once you're able to do so, are you open to negotiating? Are you comfortable with contract negotiations and litigations? Do you understand your debt ratio? Are, how, are, how comfortable are you with taking on debt? Because you'll know, hey, I, I don't need that much money to hit my goals. I, I don't need $10 million. I really only want this amount because I want to get my, I want to get this money, flip it, pay you back, get you the fuck out of my business, yep. and keep making my money. Yep. Right? And if you take this huge lump sum, Oh, you married. <laughs> For life. For life. Bro. Ball and chain. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere. Unless you're going double diamond, triple platinum, and some even, shit. You know what I'm saying? Even if you do, you're still not going to get out because you made too much for them. You're going to have to re- you're gonna renegotiate. Or you're gonna become, no, you're going to become dependent because if, if you're able to pay that type of money back, it means that you scaled extremely fast and you don't and you did not put the systems in place that you're yep. standing on. Yep. They built all the systems you're standing on. Yep. Therefore, if you go independent, you know, you're going to lose a lot of you're footing. Why does Drake... Yeah. Like Russ made this. Russ was saying, and um, uh, Russ had an interview with um, mm, Face. Laugh me, Face here. Steve Stout. Steve Stout. Russ had an interview with Steve Stout, and they were basically saying if Drake was to go independent, he fucked the whole game up. Oh, yeah. After that, everybody would go independent, yep. right? Yep. All right. Let's talk about uh, that's a whole other conversation. But in short. <laughs> <laughs> fucking short because I know all y'all might not be watching this let, let right. us know if y'all like these long term long seriously, conversations seriously. we really want to know do y'all like these long conversations do y'all want us to make little short clips anyway it, with the Drake with the Drake shit if Drake was to fuck around and go um, and go independent okay. he would not have the system that has allowed him to scale globally consistently uh, across across the uh, the current environment right True. when we look at when we look at this fucking music he has a system for creating dope music. I, I, he has a system. I believe he has his own touring system and things of that nature. He does. Right? Yep. He could just say, you know, I'm just going to release my music, drop it on streaming, and then just do whatever the fuck I want to do. Right? But the label is playing such a role in so many different areas that every single thing they currently do, he would have to replace it on his own. On now, his own. could he do it? Yes. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. But why take on why the Why do that? Yeah. Right? There, there are different mindsets in business. If you look at, and I'll give it to you in a business sense. You look at Apple. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Apple says, we know that we can make the microchip ourselves. We know we can make the phone case ourselves. We know, but if instead we're going to outsource these things and we're going to focus on on whatever core competency we want, which is our brand, which is on, you know, getting really dope cameras, which they don't make themselves, they get them from Sony, yep. right? But they're like, we're going to focus on marketing and we're going to focus on, you know, whatever else, customer experience and all the user experience and all the type of shit, right? Yeah. yeah. We want to focus on that. So we're going to outsource all these other things, right? Which they could bring all that in-house. They have the skill sets to do all that shit if they wanted to, but they choose not to. When you look at someone like Amazon, Amazon says, I want to control the whole situation. 
Amazon now is shipping their own products. Yep. Right? Amazon yep. doesn't have to ship their own products. They don't. Amazon could have just done a better deal with UPS. I'm pretty sure they've been bullying UPS for years now. Oh, yeah, they right? Have. So now <laughs> you they got to the point where it was like, you know what? Fuck you, UPS. We're going to we're gonna do it ourselves. <laughs> do they have to do that? No. Is it more work? Yes. Is it more responsibility? Yes. Is it more to manage? Yes. Do they have to hire more people? Yes. Is yeah. there a larger team of people? Yes. Is it more stress? Fuck yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Do you want to add stress? Some people do. Some and that's, people don't. And that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the Drake should that's, he sound yeah. relatable situation. Yeah. Drake doesn't. He could. He, he could. could. He, he could do could. it. Yeah. But why? Well, why? Well, what? Why take on all that extra shit? Because now, because right now he has the benefit of saying, yo, something fucked up. Go fix it. Yep. Right? It's all on y'all. If it goes bad, matter of fact, y'all gonna pay me back. I'm gonna sue y'all because y'all fucked it up. There Recoup it me. Give me my money. You there fucked up. There right? It is. But when it's you, you gotta go to your team. Mm-hmm. Y'all fucked up. Ain't no recouping. Ain't no insurance. Ain't no back. Like, we... We fuck y'all fucked up, but it's us. It's my shit. We fucked up. You're fired. Now I gotta find somebody to capable, you. or have to find someone to find someone to find someone to, to, re- replace, to replace you. you. And if we don't replace you effectively, this system continues to work ineffectively. Fuck that. Can I just apart. pay uh, yeah. Universal? Yeah. Um, you guys have been doing Do no this part. for. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> thank you. And that's the reason why this motherfucker does not. I don't see him going independent. Oh I mean, no, because I just don't think and, he and needs to. He shouldn't have to. And I don't right. think. And if he does, I'm not gonna say he's stupid. He's probably doing it for a good reason. But I don't see it. Happening. I don't see because if for that type of work, for that type of work of that type of skill, that team, that managing all that shit, you can go into another industry, and make way more money mm-hmm. doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. So for him. From a business perspective, he can just go into another sector. Goddamn, yeah. Rihanna, they say that she's a billionaire now from fucking makeup. Drake yeah. can go do some other, other shit, shit. Yeah. and take that type of energy there. Doesn't make sense to do it in entertainment. Why? All that work, less cash. Yeah. So do I see him going independent? Fuck no. no. But if it happens, it'll be an interesting phenomenon to see. Hey, it is what it is, man. If hey. You, but hey, hey, hey. You, if you decide to want to go independent, just know what you're getting yourself into. Know that's, what you're getting yourself into. That's all I'm saying. Hey man, y'all like hit the like button. Like button. Hit the like, like button. button. All right. Like button. Um, and uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, but I want to wrap this up with an opportunity. Um, a lot of independent artists really win from sync deals and merchandising and shows at the beginning of their career. Ain't that the truth? That's where artists first get their original streams of income to start building their career. And um, I've provided all sorts of content online to help you learn that type of stuff. But today, I'm not just giving you content. I'm giving you an opportunity. So today, you have a chance to actually submit some work to me. Um, and in, in, in exchange, if your junk, your junk, if your stuff is dope, <laughs> if your stuff is dope, I'm going to take it and I'm going to help facilitate it getting into Viacom or into their uh, catalog platforms to help you get sync deals, to help you get catalog-based sync deals that will bring you residual revenue every single you know month, whatever. It depends on how much, what show you get put on and how many you know yeah. people watching it. I'm going to put a link to the video where I broke that down and provided all the instructions. I'm going to provide that link in the um, description below. So if you want to get your music on TV shows and on, on movies, things of that nature, follow the instructions on that link. You're going to end up sending your music to a web, to a, an email address, and we're going to be listening to it, vetting it out. And if it's good enough and you meet the criteria, we're going to submit it. We're going to get you out here in the system to start making money. That's an opportunity. I'm not just talking it. I'm out here trying to help you guys. So, with that said, I don't know everything. But I know a lot about a little, a little bit about a lot. And I'm always here trying to give you guys everything I got right here on Phase 6 in this episode. The first episode to re-released <laughs> of Student of the Game. Student of the Game, man. Oh, what you got for him? Hey, man, you already know, man. Be better than you were the day before. Yes. That's it, baby. We yeah. out. It's not about control. You can do you can do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck what you do. As long as you know when you do make some money, I'm going to be the first person that gets paid.